Yeah, it's working. Hey, hey everyone, I uh, just woke up and wanted to record a quick video that I, I didn't say a few things yesterday. One in particular was that the reason why I knew my father's gold watch was suspicious and could be related to, to organized crime is because I knew a guy who was involved in organized crime and he once told me a story where he, uh, he was paid, you know, many thousands of dollars to uh, to drive a car about two miles, so he was he took the job. He's like, for sure. What? I only have to drive a car two miles? Sure, I'll do it. And they said there was there was jewelry inside, stolen jewelry, obviously. He goes, no problem. Sounds easy. <laughs> and he said they showed up with a huge bucket of gold, mostly gold and diamonds. Um, jewelry that's been stolen like he said there was m like a huge container just full of watches and rings and everything I guess that I guess it was a, a, a th either from a jewelry store or just from a, a, a ring of thieves maybe we're breaking into houses and in rich areas anyways when he put that uh, that crate of gold in his car he could no longer drive his car it was too heavy it lowered the car so, yeah, to uh, then do it in a couple of trips, but uh, he said it was, now he knew why they would pay him thousands of dollars, because if he was stopped, he would have been totally screwed. Anyways, that was a great story, I remember it. I'll never forget it. And um, when I knew my father had a gold watch worth $15,000, um, when I was doing this thinking, said that sounds like the kind of watch that would have been in a big crate of gold from organized crime and they just gave it out maybe to their fa to their favorite people or maybe my father was involved in a theft who knows um, now something else I wanted to say which is really shocking very depressing it relates to narcissism I think just came out so marijuana was legalized uh, last week and uh, I just read an article that said six in ten or four in ten. I think it was, I can't remember the number, who cares? We'll say half. Half of marijuana smokers, regular marijuana smokers, will not admit it to people they meet. They're ashamed of what they do. I don't understand this. This is something I do not have. Um, I was watching a video from uh, Todd Grande. If you haven't seen him, he's great. And uh, he was talking about uh, a, the five-factor model and in particular agreeableness. I have most of the agreeable factors, in, except for one. But in particular, they say that very agreeable people are, uh, show a lot of candor. They're very honest. They don't hold things back. And I'm, I've never held anything back about what I've done or who I am. Why would I do something? This is what i got to ask people. Maybe one of you can answer me, because I do know that I have a friend who told me that as the older sibling, he's basically programmed that way to keep control of his image. I imagine not so as the, young, the younger siblings um, look up to him as, a, as an example, so maybe he's just used to hiding things. That's really the only hypothesis I can think of, because if you're going to be a pothead and you're going to meet potential friends and really potential lovers and you're gonna hide it you're setting yourself up for uh, a pretty bad relationship you're setting yourself up for a lot of stupidity in the future potentially you're setting yourself up to be a well, you're a liar right off the top why would you want to make yourself a liar over something that has no moral uh, significance I mean I wouldn't even make myself a liar over things that were morally repugnant, you know, unless it was, you know, illegal and I could and I was talking to a police. I'm not going to do something I'm ashamed of to the point that I can't discuss it, to deal with it, and I can't believe that so many people <laughs> are like that out there, and this is something that I've learned. And it's still something that I have to accept that most people are liars about who they are. 
and what they do, what they've accomplished. They're full of shame. And uh, they say borderlines have shame, but I don't know. I mean, I, uh, I definitely conquered that a long time ago if I did have it. Maybe it was just beaten out of me, I don't know. As the, gold, as the uh, black sheep, I am not ashamed of anything. I know what I am, and I've been stripped down to my bears. <laughs> Anyways, I just can't. Can someone explain me that? Can someone explain me that in a country where it's legal to smoke marijuana? Why would people who smoke marijuana on a regular basis hide the fact? I mean, what, society programmed them that deeply? To hate themselves? To actually be ashamed of who they are and what they enjoy? That, my friends, is more pathetic than almost, you know, anything else I've, I can imagine. I mean, it's better to be manipulative, if you ask me. That, you know, that really is sin number one for me, to lie about yourself. Because that's damaging yourself. That's not hurting other people. You know, it's bad enough to hurt other people, of course. But to hurt yourself that way? To set yourself up at the beginning of every, you know, relationship or uh, just, you know, passing acquaintance to set them up? Not to know who you are? I mean, what else? This is how, how my parents got, got in trouble, right? They were not who they said they were. My father pretended to be straight into adults. My father, my mother pretended to be into men for the money, and it ruined their life. Or, I don't know if it ruined it, they may have had a lot of fun, but it definitely affected it in a way that they didn't need. I'm just looking to drop that right here because that for me is just, I was shocked, I was shocked. Maybe when it's illegal, fine. But when it's legal, you're gonna hide it from people. My parents hid their drug use from me their whole life. All it did was make me hate them because I didn't understand why they were so moody at times. I can't imagine someone smoking weed coming home to their girlfriend who's going to see their mood change and smell smoke on them and the guy's going to try to deny it. My brother used to do that. You see, he was a narcissist. He used to have girlfriends and he'd, I'd come over, we'd smoke a joint together or five joints together and then he'd go crazy spraying uh, Febreze in the house. And I just thought, what the f what the hell, man? You don't love this girl or you don't love yourself? Something's wrong there when you've got to spray Febreze to hide who you are. Oh, I don't get that, you know. Is that just a... That's a good recipe for a non-loving relationship. It, it didn't last. I mean, the woman he married eventually was just as much a pothead as all of us. So... Out. He had a good relationship at the end. Thank God. Okay, that's it.